Let's go ahead and talk about the time that the United States decided speed. I am speed. You guys requested it enough. This is the Sprint Missile. First off, what is the Sprint Missile? Its first launch was in 1965. Congress canceled the program by 1973, but it stayed in service until 1975. So why such a short window? What exactly was so special about this Sprint Missile, and why do people care about it so much? Well, the fact of the matter is, while I do continue to love the Nike Hercules because it was so widely used, the Sprint Missile, on the other hand, was not as widely used, but was capable of Mach 10 speeds carrying a W66 nuclear warhead in 1965. Yes. That's correct, Mach 10 speeds in 1965. Do you have any idea what it takes to hit Mach 10 with anything? I'll give you a hint, it's the opposite of communism. Now we all know the United States is the fastest place on earth. I understand that there are certain other records held by other countries. For example, a Royal Air Force pilot happens to have the world land speed record, and the Australians happen to have the world water speed record. But when it comes to air and rail, the United States has them both. The air is with an SR-71, and the rail is the Holloman Air Force Base high speed track. Now around the end of World War II, when the V-2 started to become really well known around the world, the United States and the USSR both grabbed a hold of a ton of people and pulled them in opposite directions because they wanted their missile programs to become a real big hit. The United States got all the smart ones, we're just gonna go ahead and put it that way. I know, I know, Operation Paperclip wasn't the most morally correct thing, but if you offered me work for somebody or get hanged, I'm probably gonna work for somebody. So anyways, with the development of the Nike Hercules slightly before this, radar systems really took a huge leap and the radar systems got better. Well, phased array radars started to become really important to the United States military. And the difference between a phased array and a Doppler, and that's that whole other video itself, a phased array radar can track much faster objects. Let's just put it that way. So a Sprint missile obviously looks like a child's idea of a missile. It, so Sprint missiles hanging out underground in its silo. All of a sudden, explosives blow the door off the top. They had to use explosives because of how fast that missile was coming out of that silo. A cold gas generator would launch it out of the silo, and within two seconds, that first stage of the motor is producing producing 650,000 pounds of thrust behind that warhead. The Sprint missile could cover 17 miles in 15 seconds. As this thing accelerated, it was pushing over 100 Gs. So all the hypersonic fanboys in my comment section, we know a thing or two, because we've seen a thing or two. Anyways, by the time the first stage of this missile broke loose and the second stage had ignited, it was moving so fast that the first stage would just disintegrate before it even touched the ground. Its optimal engagement altitude was 37 miles up where it would deliver a payload from a W66 nuclear warhead. By this point in time, the United States radars were so good that unless you had dozens of tracks out there and dozens of warheads, you couldn't overload a Sprint missile system. You couldn't overload a Hercules missile system. This thing was moving so fast it would coat itself in a layer of plasma and glow white as it flew through the air. At max speed, the surface of this missile would get to over 6,000 degrees freedom height. It's like Fahrenheit, but much better at winning wars. Now around 1973, Congress decided to pull the plug on the system because it was too expensive and they had also come to an agreement with Russia about the number of missiles and warheads they could have. We know that both sides didn't actually pay attention to this treaty, but the United States tried to put their best foot forward. The Sprint missile stayed in service until 1975, having never been used ever anywhere, unfortunately. There's only two of them still in existence. One is at Fort Sill here, the other one is at White Sands Missile Range where I used to be. It's important to note that when they shut down the Sprint in 1975, they were already working on the Sprint 2, which was supposedly faster and more capable. So while other countries were still learning about jet propulsion, the United States was deciding to, hey guys, crazy idea. What if we just take the nose cone off of something and make it do Mach 10? Anyways, as always, do not give it to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. Play me out.